Thanks. Okay, welcome everyone. Hello, and uh, thank you for joining the second in this, this series of five talks themed in it together. Uh, we hope you enjoy today's talk, which is about the power of failure and learning from failure. Um, just to, you'll see the slide there, which shows the other talks that we have. So hopefully you didn't miss the lockdown heroes of side hustles. And then we have three more uh, talks coming up every other week at the same time. So please, if you're interested, please uh, register for those talks too. Uh, if we can move on to the, the next slide. So this is just showing our agenda for today. So I'll uh, do some introductions. Um, I've already mentioned the In It Together series. I'll introduce you to Alex, our speaker for today. And then um, we'll, Alex will talk about some takeaways that you can, you can take away with you and do some homework if you like. And then at the end, we'll have a Q&A session, which Anita will um, run and then we'll close. Okay, so um, introductions. <clears throat> I think there's another slide. Okay, so I'm Victoria Richards. I work for Jacobs in the Northeast. I'm growth lead and project manager, <clears throat> and I've over 20 years experience in the nuclear industry. Very passionate about STEM and inspiring the new generation into fascinating careers in engineering. I'm in the leadership team of over 200 engineers with a diverse client base, and I'm also passionate about the Northeast, even though I'm from Wales. Uh, Anita is co-hosting with me. Uh, Anita also works for Jacobs and is the Northeast Women in Nuclear Lead and is on the committee for the Nuclear Institute and Association for Project Management. Anita has organized multiple events involving companies, including Jacobs, EDF Energy, PDL Solutions, and ACES STEM to celebrate our capabilities and achievements within the Northwest. Just a bit of housekeeping, I will remind you that this is being recorded for uh, future use. Uh, I'd appreciate if you can keep muted during the talk to avoid any background noise. Uh, feel free to use the camera if you wish. Uh, when it comes to the Q&A at the end, uh, feel free to turn your camera on and um, you can use the chat function to ans ask any questions during the talk. Uh, if you can just note with a question at the beginning or a cue just to show that it is a question uh, for Alex. Uh, great if you can add your name as well, uh, but we will take anonymous questions too if, if you prefer to do that. Um, during the Q&A session, you're also free to put your hand up uh, virtually, so press the raise hand button if you'd like. And you can ask the question directly to Alex. Okay, so um, the next slide, uh, please. Okay, um, so is it a slide? Just before this, I'll just introduce you, Alice, because this is your slide, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> um, so Alex Fraser is our speaker for today. So Alex also works for Jacobs as a senior water scientist based in Leeds. Alex's career started off as a rugby player. This led to Alex becoming a sports coach. Then his career took several turns when he's when he then studied to become an engineer. Alex also uses the lessons he learned to shape how he approached his work and how he tackles engineering and project challenges across the UK. As a senior water scientist, Alex is working on projects across the UK for Jacobs. He specializes in catchment management and blue green infrastructure. Contributing across multiple technical projects, including social, coastal and strategies, to fluvial and surface water projects. Sorry if my internet's a little bit uh, unstable today. Um, Alex, uh, Alex is lead a lead member of the Humber 
1,100 plus team developing innovative solutions for the estuary wide flood risk management strategy for the next 100 years. Alex's role in strategy is on the appraise is on the appraisal looking to balance the needs of present day communities while adapting to the future challenges of the Humber and wider world. Today, yeah. Okay, Alex, over to you. Thank you. Smashing, thank you very much, Victoria. Um, so there's going to be a few interactive tasks um, for this session. Um, so the link on the screen is to a poll anywhere sec section. So I will also try to post that in the chat um, if we have one. Uh, struggle to find that. But I'll leave this screen up for a while so you can grab your screens and type that in. Um, I'm going to introduce myself, talk you through my background. As Victoria said, I'm a former rugby player, former sports coach, former student several times over and have tried many, many different ways and things in which to earn a living um, and eventually settled on, on engineering. Um, as a result of that, I've had several failures, several knockbacks and several times where I've been left stood in a room staring at the wall. Um, so I'll run you through through those. I'll explain how that's helped me grow as a person, how that's helped me improve myself. Um, and then I'm going to, at the end, teach you all how to be a duck, which is a very important skill to have. Um, the, my co-presenters will be aware that I have agonised over this presentation. It's been rewritten, redrafted, pulled apart, um, all with the aim of becoming a really slick presenter. I wanted to, to emulate the guys that are on the screen now and the people that are on the screen now who have absolutely nailed the presenting world. Um, a successful person largely because I'd, I'm largely just me and I just feel like I've done okay um, I don't feel I have a massive want you to follow me um, I've been in several sessions like that and I largely fall asleep at them um, I don't like the other brand which is sitting there going don't do what I did learn from my mistakes I'm not, not going to be that person <laughs> Sorry, that was a fire alarm test. I was just just making sure I didn't have to go running out the building and end the presentation too early. Um, so, as as has been 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 said, this is this is me. Um, this is my nice shiny branded poster. It looks really really cool and really slick. Uh, presentations that. Sorry, there it was going again. Um, presentations that, that, that work around this, I always find really lack authenticity. And that's not something I want to, to do for you guys today. Um, I'm not going to try and give you the uh, the slickest presentation going. I'm not going to try and um, inflate my own ego. Um, one example of a presentation that did that, that always sticks in my mind, um, was given by Sir Steve Redgrave name dropped there. Um, I attended the UK school games in, I think it was 2005. It doesn't really matter for the presentation's purposes. Um, but we had a trooping of the team's opening ceremony thing and Sir Steve Redgrave got up and gave this, this, this speech talk thing. Um, and I was not interested. It was, it was, it was dire. Um, I, like many of the 14, 15 year, old, 15 year olds around me, started looking around. Now, bear in mind, I'm a grotty kid from Blakes and I grew up in, in, in Teesside. I was from, let's like say, Blakes and school. And that's a, that wasn't a, a, a great school for opportunities to meet people like Sir Steve Redgrave. 
And I got this one, and honestly, it tanked. He had he had a, a captive audience of a couple of hundred athletes, and none of us were really listening. Um, I drifted off and was thinking about what's for tea. Um, so I'm not going to do that to you. I'm going to try not to anyway. Um, because really, this isn't about me. It isn't about me showing what I can do, showing you how impressive I am or, or whatnot. Um, if it was, it would be a very, very short presentation. Um, what I want to do is to, to show you the tools that I used and show you how I sort of went through and what, what, what happened, what, what went on, and that failure, that not succeeding, not achieving something isn't an end, it's just another step. So I'm going to put the poll up on the screen. Um, hopefully, again, if if one of my co-presenters can point out the chat function to me or copy this into the chat function, um, I will share. There's the chat function. I found it. Um, brilliant. Thank you very much, Laura Brown, for posting that in. Um, if everyone can click on that link that's in the chat, and go across to Paul Anywhere. Um, this is where we'll talk about what 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 are three characteristics of people. Um, my net is on a bit of a go slow, so apologies for that. And we can just see that sort of being focused, determination, positive, confident. Disciplined, stay, staying put is one, I think. Put, putting two words together across the box. And that's another fire alarm test. Apologies. <laughs> if I do go streaking out of the building, um, go on without me. Um, it won't change the presentation much for you all. Talented, talented, another great one. I'd love to say I was talented, um, as this presentation demonstrates. Um, here we go, some really inspirational words, um, a lot of bounce, bounce, what a word, motivated. A lot of a lot of these words are focused around how, how diligent someone is from the off, how determined they are, how motivated they are, how focused they are. They're never going to let that unyielding thing. And if we look back to those talented presenters that I, uh, I presented on at the, the very start, oh, I would say those, those people are all determined, motivated, focused and driven. Um, but if we look and we move on to, oh, I've lost that screen, bit of talent lacking in, uh, in IT there. If we move on to the next screen and the next slide, which is go in and put three words that you would associate with failure. Three words that come into your mind when failure. Unavoidable. Ah, oh, someone's, someone's watched this presentation before. Trying. Overconfident. Hurtful. Disappointing. Inability. Ooh, inability. That's gonna that 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 cuts. <laughs> Taking too many risks. A lot of the messaging that I'm getting out of this is all around that failure hurts, failure's a bit painful, failure's brutal. When you when people do fail, it's from losing attention, from lack of ability taking too many risks it's it's something that they've controlled which is a good message attempting inability it's really interesting thank you very much so who do we think of as successful England women's rugby team 2014, they won the World Cup, demolished every side out there, and 
a, a far far greater success than most of their their, their male counterparts in in the sport. Um, these are a team that are significantly underfunded. Most a lot of the the women on that stage there have part time jobs. Their full time job is not professional rugby player. Is that fair? They've just won the World Cup. We haven't. Uh, England male haven't done that since 2003 and largely reliant on one person being able to kick a ball between some sticks. These people have done, these, these women, these impressive English women have done that since 2014 and they've won more Six Nations since. They've done more, more Grand Slams. Why, why, are they, why are they disadvantaged? If these people were put on a pitch against any other people and if on this slide, if teamwork pulling together towards a common goal is the, the definition of successful, these people have it. So how we measure success is really important as well. Ultimate power couple. Barack Obama, president of the free world, leading America, changing the nation, changing how America sees politics. And arguably now Michelle Obama doing all of those things outside of the political arena. If, if success is people staying together, working as a partnership, achieving fantastic and great things, turning the tide of America in um, from, from a background, uh, a, an ethnic background, a racial background that people will automatically diminish, they have, they have achieved, they have done far greater than anyone else that's going to come up on this board. She suffered with extreme anxiety and she's come through that and she succeeded. If overcoming internal mental health issues to succeed, this woman has nailed it and has achieved far greater. Angela Merkel, German Chancellor. Fantastic example of leading an EU country as a, as a woman in politics, which arguably is, well, sorry, not arguably, is heavily diminished. People are don't give women politicians the respect they deserve, and women are underrepresented in politics. There's a significant gender bias across the country. Uh, my sister won't mind me saying that she's been told several times that she can't do certain things when she was growing up through school. She's now a successful project manager, achieving far greater than, than, than I have, and arguably she should be given this presentation. But society doesn't allow that, society doesn't empower these people. If success, is working in a man's world, a, a heavily male dominated political, political Europe and pull, getting them all to work together to a, a really a higher, excellent common goal. Angela Merkel's the success. Stephen Hawking, amazing physicist. Th his theoretical physics and cosmology has changed the way in which we look at the world. And he's arguably one of the most famous physicists going. If, if success is overcoming disability and overcoming the life challenges that you get thrown at you that you cannot control, I don't think you'd, I don't think you'd struggle to beat Stephen. I think you'd struggle to beat Stephen Hawking and Anthony Joshua, heavyweight world champion in multiple different belts. He was born into a deprived area of London and he's overcame all of those challenges, challenges with crime and gang culture to become a world champion, to be not just someone who can punch people in the face really hard, but actually someone who's a, a, a role model and a, an example in their own right. But if success is measured on how hard you can punch someone in the face on this board, he would wipe the floor with all of them, apart from some of the female rugby team. How you measure success and the, the parameters and the scope of your success or failure dictate whether you are a success or a failure. Every one of these people would fail in each other's realm. Stephen Hawking would burn the rest of them, but he could never box, he couldn't play rugby. He wasn't interested in politics. He largely wasn't interested in cooking, I imagine. I don't know, I've never tasted his, uh, his baking. Um, all of those things, the frame and the context of each person, they have a different level of success and failure. They can all fail, they can all succeed. The link at the bottom of the, the, the presentation there is a link to, to Nadia talking about her mental health struggles and anxiety um, through her teenagers. And I, I watched that and it was a really powerful section. 
um, where she says that she doesn't feel since 18 that she's gone more than, or she, she doesn't think there's been more than two months where she's gone without a panic attack. Every single month she's had a panic attack, she's had such severe anxiety that, that it, it stops her. It stops her in her tracks when she's sort of moving along in her, in her floor state and she is, she is stopped in dead in her tracks. And if we, if we measure that success, if we just ignore the fact that, that people overcome these challenges, then we're, we're not, we're not doing, doing, doing justice. Um, I, as I've said, I've agonised over this presentation several times. It has been in the bin several times. I have been ready to email Victoria or Anita or rest of the, the rest of my co-presenters and say, I'm out, sorry, I can't do this several times. Not because I'm not interested in what I'm presenting to you, not because I think that um, it should be someone else, but because I've been really anxious. I've been scared to give this presentation. I've been scared to talk. And if a 20 odd stone rugby player who's built like a brick outhouse um, can do that, then any of you can. Any of you can achieve anything you want. And that's one of the important things. Um, I've, been, I've been terrified because of some faceless people. None of you have got your cameras on. There's only me with my camera on showing my face. I've been terrified of some some, some some people on the other end of a Zoom call secretly judging me going, going oh, he's a bit dramatic, isn't he? Oh, he needs to man up. He needs to stop being so soft. Oh, I don't believe, don't believe that he's gone through that. I don't believe he's felt this or whatever. And, but I'm here. And if this presentation goes well, brilliant. If it goes bad, well, I tried. It was worth a go. And that's, that's, that's the, the key thing that I want you to want you to sort of learn and see and understand is that you don't have to you don't have to be one of these incredibly successful people. Success is different for everyone and failure is different for everyone. Failure for me is not giving these things a go, not turning up and not trying. F failure isn't actually failing for me. Failure is not starting and that is the most difficult thing. It's a really challenging thing to get over. So this is this is my background. I'll give you a run through of my my background. And um, one thing that that I've seen quite a lot is this Instagram versus reality. Um, and and Emily Clarkson's been a key advocate for shining a light. And this is her Instagram versus reality. Um, I wouldn't do that because I generally don't have an Instagram worthy photo. Um, but this shows the two the contrast between what what we're living on and what we're doing for 24 hours a day seven days a week 52 weeks of a year however many years you live we're all that we're all that person on the right look look like we've just got out of bed hairs a little bit all over but what we're seeing and what we're being what's being forced down our neck what's being thrown at us is the image on the left it's perfect this image of success this brand this idea that not I never fail I am always successful I am I am I am and it's not like that that's not how success and failure works um successes don't make you successful you could beat a two-month-old child every single day at snap at several other sporting games um, and not be successful Trust me, I know I was that two-month-old child that was getting beaten at scrap by my dad for years. <laughs> well, not two-month-old for years, but he beat me at scrap for a long time, largely because he doesn't accept that a two-year-old two-year-old child needs to succeed as well. He likes to likes to beat the child, and not beat the child like that, sorry, but deliver a victory upon that person. And failure doesn't failing doesn't make you a failure. Not being able to do X, Y, Z doesn't, isn't a measure of failure. If we look at the animal kingdom, if we judged every animal by their ability to swim underwater for many hours, then whales would be right at the top and fish would be even better. Or an elephant would be pretty, pretty ruined. We'd be pretty ruined. 
if we judge all animals by the ability to climb a tree, an elephant's not going to do well and neither's a rhino. They're specialised, they have a different element of success and failure. And it's exactly the same for people. Failing to achieve a goal still puts you ahead of a crowd. Going somewhere and pushing on and trying to achieve is still success. Even if you don't reach the pinnacle, you don't reach whatever, whatever high lofty heights there are, you've still gone somewhere, you've still done something. And fear, fear of failure is not a reason to try. These two examples of things that I've been thinking about, I look daft, I look stupid. I've been terrified of you people on this call and one of the, one of the people on the call is just a number. So I'm afraid of a number. Um, and I'd have wasted my time effort, yeah. You might, you, it might feel like a wasted time, might feel like wasted effort, but you've had a go and you've grown from it. So this is my, this is my old school. Started Gleason School in 2020 with 17 GCSEs, A start to C, go me. And at Blakeson, I needed to win everything. I was obsessed with winning. Um, if you don't know Blakeson, Blakeson's been knocked down now. It's now a little um, and a crematorium. Um, by and large, an improvement on what Blakeson was. Um, it's now North Shore over in, over in Port Track area, Teesport, Tyler area. Um, it was pretty rough. Um, a lot of people I knew fell into quite a bad cycle. Um, ended up drinks, drugs, crime. We even got a teacher who was prosecuted for, for drug supply. It showed how nice a school we were, we were at. It was pretty rough and pretty ropey. Um, I was very fortunate. I had an incredible family that have been able to help me and keep me away from that sort of thing, keep me on the straight and narrow um, and focused on my studies, doing what I want. But there was one sort of teacher who gave me a little nugget of advice and my parents, uh, it was John, John Hudson, uh, English teacher and was my tutor in first year. And he said that one of the key things to have when you come out of school and you know, whenever you're doing anything is options. Because failure is inevitable. Something's going to go wrong. You're not going to have to have one route available to you. You're going to be on a diversion. You're going to be going the other way. Life's a journey. Um, nicely dramatic there. Um, but it's, it is, it's a series of, series of choices, go X, go Y. You need to have, you need, the, the key for you is to build that resilience, build your options and build the ability to go, up, go to other places and do other things. Which is what I did when I came out with it, Blake's and I came out, I wanted to go and be able to still do some studies, still have the brain, but not just rely upon the brawn of rugby. Um, oh, sorry. So I, I started playing rugby at 13. It was largely, I was, I was at a football tournament, football training, and the coach came and we went, do you fancy having a game of rugby at the weekends? Mm, yeah, okay, went into a, a tournament. We're desperate for players and you look like a big lad, you can run. So do you, do you fancy having a go? Um, yeah, why not? Turned up to the tournament and honestly, it was easy. I found rugby so easy to, to play. I'd done basketball, I'd done football, I'd been playing sports for years. And rugby was just my flow state. It was something that was really easy to me um, at, at that level. Um and I thought I was slick quick. I thought I was the the the, the much nuts. Um, until I went to Durham County trial at fourteen and got got absolutely ploughed into the ground. I got ran over. I got beaten up. I got I turned up late as well. Um, and I just didn't. I didn't turn up. I was terrified. There was all these big blokes running around with hair everywhere and wanting to eat people, and I was terrified. Rightly so, as a 13-year-old trying to play 14 or 15-year-old rugby, it was terrifying, all of these meat-eating monsters. Um, so I failed that year. I was down, downtrodden on my ability to, to play rugby. I still stuck at it. I still went back to Stockton, had a go. And then I went to the next next county trial and I got in. Woo, war behold, success. I was achieving things. Um, played a mixture of A and B games and just popped it through and did all right. Um, next year, I decided, right, I'm going to actually make a go of it. I want, I like rugby. I'm going to try and do something with it. Uh, so I moved my home club to Darlington. Um, then went after went after Durham County hard that year, really trained, really prepared, really 
sort of turned on the turned on the show. And I got Fulton's trials. So I was I thought I was the best thing since sliced bread because I was going to play for Falcons. Um, turned up at the trial, terrified that I was going to make a mess of myself and look an idiot. Um, so I actually played pretty awful in the trial. And unsurprisingly, I, I didn't get offered to come back. They didn't say, oh, here's a contract. You're, you're going to be the next X, Y, or Z. Um, so I had to take a bit of a sit back and look at myself and look at what I wanted to do. And is rugby something I really want to go for? Um, and decided, yeah, yes, I, I like rugby. I'm, I'm a good player. I want to, I want to go for it. So at 16, I did, and I really went for it. I really hit rugby hard. Um, I was training regularly. I was doing all sorts of other sports, uh, but I really put put the afterburners on when it came to rugby. Um, I eat, bet, slept, everything rugby, um, and yeah, I got Fulton's that year. Brilliant, and then. Immediately after that first game, or a couple of weeks after that first game that I played for them, they came back and said, right, we want you on a full-time contract um, coming up to, to join our academy. So I was in the Player Development Academy for three years. Honestly, I was I had a head, head the size of a... Well, I probably shouldn't say that, but it was a big head, really big head. Um, I thought I was the best thing since sliced bread. And... Did so for probably 18 months, two years, nearly two years. And then and then sort of the final year when you were starting to get into the uh, into the into the, the, the real crunch time. Um I bottled it. I was scared, I was terrified. I walked out on a pitch to play and was scared of scared of making a mistake, scared of failure, scared of doing the wrong. Um and that resulted in my my contract being torn from my well, not my contract being torn from my face, but um, I turned up to a training session one evening, um, academy training session, and I think it was Ian Peel, one of the, the coaches, sat me and four of the lads down in a changing room um, just before training, which is a nice time to do it, and just went, you guys aren't, aren't getting a contract, you're out, have fun. Um, if you're in the area, you're welcome to sort of pop, pop in, we might invite you back for some odd training sessions if we work because we'll watch you. but. You're largely out. Um, I was in a different place. I was on a full time program, so I had a separate conversation. They said, "Look, if you want to have a trip, if you want to come down and train, we've got these slots." But I, I was out. I was gone. Falcons. That 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 life plan, that strategy, that being a successful rugby player, the the playing playing um, professional rugby was gone, um, and. I also felt like getting to uni. I didn't get the grades. I was, I felt I was, it was a tough, it, it took to me. Because um, I was sat there at, at, at work and first thing in the morning, got up, went and checked UCAS. Unsuccessful, you're out. You're not getting it in Northumbria. Even with diminished grades, I couldn't make it. Um, I was fortunate that I, I got it. I, I, I had work to go, I had to go to, go to, go to my job, um, sports coaching. Um, and I just was was fed up with it, honestly. Um, there was not. I didn't know where I was going to go. I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, my dad fortunately went up to to teach up to to teach to college for me. Picked up um, picked up my my grades. Came back and went. There you go. Uh, here's the, the 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 clearing paper. Do you want to have a go? Try and get into another university. Um, I didn't really bother. I just gave up at that point. I was like, ready, I'm not going to university this year. I need to think about something else. Um, and Julie's just posted about, do you think do you think failure is a nudge to do something else? Um, it can be. It was definitely a nudge that rugby wasn't the way for me, but um, failure in the sense of going to university, going to Northumbria, getting, in, getting the grades to go and do that, to, to, do the, to, to be in the career I am now, um, I didn't believe that, that that was a failure. I didn't believe that that was a nudge to do something else. I believed that that was, yes, Falcons is gone. Rugby's gone. Rugby's no longer part of my existence in life. But actually, it, it helped me focus on what was going to make me happy, what, what I was going to enjoy. Um, and genuinely, now I do feel, yeah, I, I, I'm enjoying my career now more than I would have enjoyed rugby because rugby, I was constantly anxious about failing. 
Um, what I now understand to be imposter syndrome, I had that awfully throughout my time at Falcons. Um, after first couple, the first year or so of thinking my head was enormous and I was the best thing since sliced bread, I was basically terrified to walk out on a pitch with a Falcons badge on my chest. Um, same for a Gosforth badge when I was at that college. But when it came to going out with a Darlington badge, a club badge, a, a team, a bunch of friends, um, less pressure. I loved it. I played. I played some outstanding. Uh, when it came to playing for Falcons, when it came to playing at that level, I wouldn't say it was the players. I wouldn't say it was the quality of the opposition or anything. I just bottled it before I even walked out on a pitch. I was paralysed with fear, so to speak. Um, and yeah, that's where my failure stemmed from. Personally, in Falcons, was was that. Um, Another comment from I think there's a level of success, failure or success relative to what you're comparing yourself to. Absolutely. Um, you, you, you set some goals, you set some ambitions. Um, if you're setting your, if you're at the start of your career in IT and you think, right, okay, I'm going to compare myself to Bill Gates, you're always going to be falling behind. Um, you need to set realistic targets and focus on those. And we, we'll, we'll come to that later. So after not getting into uni, failing that, what did I do? Well, I went to I went to a college. I was able to accidentally got asked for an interview at SRCB um, when they didn't realise I was a third year student. I was managed to get myself in front of the right person and plead my case and pretty much beg to be let in. And they did. They let me in. I started my uh, my third year college there um, and eventually got the grades and got into Northumbria. Um, not the greatest university in the geography in the world, not the be- not the not the worst at all by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but I decided that I was going to go to Northumbria and I worked my guts off to get there. And I came out very happy because I achieved what I'd set out to do. It had been the first bit of success I'd had since basically not getting into North England in I was eight-ish, something like that. The, the, the year or so previously, I'd finally got some modicum of success and managed to, to fight my way through. Um, came out of Northumbria with a 2-1. Not particularly pleased with that. Didn't really work that hard at Northumbria. Probably should have. Um, and the result being that I came back to the sports centre where I had a, a part-time job. And with my fabulous, shiny degree, um, went and worked in a warehouse picking up boxes and putting boxes down um, for, for the year. And I worked in the warehouse during the day and I worked at the sports centre every night and just kept doing that and couldn't get a job, couldn't get anything. I felt pretty, pretty shoddy after that as well because I'd, I'd done my university. I'd come out with not the grade I wanted, upper, upper class second honours, whatever it's called. Um, but how I get a job? I wasn't employable. No one wanted me, I got refused from interviews. I actually got refused from a, a group interview, which was basically just an open evening at, at Jacobs at the time, um, which that one really stung. Um, an open day, and I didn't, I didn't get allowed, didn't get allowed back to them. But that was a different. Um, we've learned a lot since, and now we'll we'll, edit, we'll 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 engage and work with anyone and everybody because that's the part of the type of company we are. We've changed and we've learned. And I'm proud to say that, and I'm proud to be part of this company now. Um, but 2015, I was very fortunate in that I was able to pick up the manager's job for the sports centre. So I actually got got a proper job, got a bit of experience and a chance to do something. Um, did that for uh, two years and realised this isn't where I want to be. I don't want to be managing a sports centre. I don't want to be a sports coach. I don't want to be worrying about is the rock wall looking fancy enough? Is the sports hall clean? Is the AstroTurf maintenance being done correctly? I wasn't, didn't want to do that. That wasn't something that made me happy. So I went back to college, went back, went back to university and started again. Did a, did a master's degree at Durham. Um, very fortunate to get a funded master's. Really happy about that research, the opportunity to actually get back into the industry I wanted. And that gave me a door into Durham and into a world of opportunity within 
the research sector and learning about the water environment, something that I always wanted to do, but never had the opportunity to get into, um, no matter how many doors I've read on. Contacts as well. And fortunately, while I was at Durham, job came up at Northumberland, went and got that job, was successful in my interview. Um, and for two or three years, I worked a full-time job in the day from seven till three, and then on the evening I went to Durham. Now, people often go on about glorifying the grind and glorifying overworking. It's not about, it wasn't about that for me. I had a job to do. I needed to do these things to get somewhere. And this is one of the things that, that people get and people um, want to show. They want to show how easy it is to get these successes. Sometimes it's hard work. Sometimes it has to be hard work. And you need to be resilient. You need to, you need to look and find the strengths. And for me, it was very easy because this, I say it was easy, it was going somewhere I wanted to be. It was exhausting. I was an awful person. I was snippy to my partner and my family. Um, I was really tired. I got quite aggro when people used to criticise me. I was just so, so focused, very blinkered, and largely not a great person to be around. Um, and but. But it was all part of my journey. Those people were there to support me, to help me through that period. Um, without them, I don't think I would have got it. Um, and I managed to get this job and I managed to come to where I am now, to Jacobs, um, to a full-time job in the industry I wanted, I wanted to work in. And I was very happy. And I am very happy now. Um, so this is what it feels like when you succeed. You're going up, you're going up, you're going up. You feel like there's no ceiling. You're going you're gonna to fly off the scale and you're going to be the best thing since sliced bread. Um, but when you have a bad day, it feels like this. It just feels like you're going down. It doesn't feel like things are going to be going back up. That, that, your mood does not change. What you need to do is... You, oh, well, say what you, what you need to do. What I needed to do whenever I had one of these days was step back and take perspective. It took a while for me to learn that. It took a while for me to learn that that bad day is just part of your overall journey and you will progress. And um, the next slide shows, shows you a bad and a good day um, because bad and good days happen. So you, you, you have a good day, you wake up, the coffee's, the coffee's hot, the cupboards are full of stock, of stock. You've had a mega strength coffee and a delightful pastry. You've jumped on the bike to work. The wind's at your back and you don't have to pedal all the way in. You get there, the showers are empty. You can walk straight in. No, no, no waiting around, no messing up. You go out for lunch. It's your free coffee on your coffee card. And you've also managed to get yourself a free, free, free panini on your, from your favourite shop. And your afternoon's good. You've not got many meetings. And you get home and it's lasagna for tea. And that's a glorious day, isn't it? Let's face it, those days are the ones you want. The other days you get, you wake up, your fridge is empty, you've got no milk, you can't have a coffee, so you just run out of the house desperately. You're cycling in the wind, it's pouring wet, it's awful, it's minging. You don't want to be there. And you get to work and you jump in the shower, you have to wait for the shower and you get on, you put your socks on and you stand in a puddle and you've got a wet sock all day. Who wants that? You go out for lunch, you've not got your, but your, your, your reward card, so you've forgotten that, so that's a wasted tea. You end up with a tuna melt, it's awful. And you get home, and then you've got a quiche and some couscous and salad for tea. What an awful day. The difference is you're going to have these days, and the end of those days, I, you know, those blue days, I come out feeling all up here. And you come out at the other day, and you feel at the bottom. Zoom out, take a step back, look at what's happened the past few weeks, the past few months, the past year, the past three, four years. Where did I come from? Where am I now? Gain that perspective because it's going to be a bumpy one. It's going to be like it's going to come along. <laughs> Someone likes a tuna melt. Someone has to, otherwise they wouldn't sell. The worst sandwich going. So this is what you're going to have. You're going to have bad days, you're going to have good days, 
you're going to have in the middle days. You're going to have days that you wake up the next day and you go, don't actually remember what happened. And lockdown is a real example of that because I couldn't tell you anything that's happened in the past few weeks. It's all just been... So wake up, go in the office, it's sun outside, well, office, spare room, which is more just a cupboard with stuff in. I've just managed to lift the desk and lift the monitor so it looks nice and clean up here. The rest is awful around here, let's be realistic. This is me showing off my shiny, shiny things. Look at how good my room is. There's a pile of crud there, a pile of crud there, it's off. Be realistic. Yes, these things are going to be bad. Yes, you're going to have bad days, but it's going to get it's going to get better. And, but as we learn new tasks and as we grow as people, as we learn things, these things happen to us as well. This is a, a great example that I picked up about people learning and growing as part of learning a process. So you start out, what is this? What is this word that this person has spoken at me? I don't have a clue. And you open a book and you read it and go, oh, I get this. I don't know why everyone else is complaining. So I, this is brilliant. And that's Mount Stupid. You think you know everything. And you are so confident. You've read one book and you think you know it all. And then a couple of days later, it's like, oh, actually, this isn't as easy as I thought it was. And then you get right down the bottom in the valley of despair. It's like, oh, my days. And you know what you don't know. At the start, you don't know what you don't know. It's blissful ignorance. Everything's daffodils and there's always nice shiny things out in front of you. Once you get a bit further into it, you realise this is going to be a long slog. That Mount Stupid was me playing rugby at, at uh, that first tournament and in my first game scoring five tries. Then I realised when I got to county and I got the people as big as me and as fast as me and as ugly as me, this is going to be a bit tougher. This is a bit hard. This isn't going to be easy. That was when I got rejected from my UCAS letter. That was when I came out of university and realised there's not a million people wanting to give me a job today. It's it's a pretty dearth and poor country out there for, for getting work as a grad. Um, largely, there's a lot of free internships if you want them. Um, but no, I can't afford them. I have to go and get a proper job. So... You'll, get, you'll go through these. You'll always have these. I have these when I pick up a new project. And I think, oh, the solutions we need, you just put a wall there. And a couple of weeks later, it's like, oh, no, you can't do that because that will happen and this will happen and it will happen and eventually everyone will kill you. That's, you've got to learn. You go, everyone goes through this. No one's, no one's immune to going through this process. You all have to climb up Mount Stupid, fall down the other side, and then you start to get learn again. You start to think, actually, no, I understand this now. I get it. I understand the problem. Um, I'm not there yet. I don't understand it all. I don't understand how to solve it. But I understand the problem. I've defined it. I understand what I'm going to do. And then you go further and say, actually, yeah, it's tough. There's a lot going on behind me. But I understand all that. And I'm pretty confident now. I'm happy. Um, it should be called, like, Mount Intelligence or something. But... You get there to a point where you're happy and you're able to, to sort of crack on. But we don't present that. We don't present this up and down mountain. We present this. The influencers, the, the shiny people are saying, look, this is it. Growth eternal. Nothing can, nothing can go wrong. You start at the bottom and it's only uphill and you can't deviate. They are graceful and elegant ducks. Well, you see the duck in the park, you go and have a look, but duck or a swan and how they move around, they're so elegant, so picturesque. And that's what Instagram does. That's what all these influencers highlight is how graceful and elegant they are at the top. But underneath the surface, they're paddling like crazy. They're giving it full beans and they're going like the clappers. They are working hard. They are stressed. They are worried. They are, like myself, a bit anxious about giving this presentation to you guys today. They, they, they go through this. So just because you see one thing, just because they portray one thing, doesn't mean that the other's not there. We have to recognise that. And this is a little bit too preachy. Not really my style. So the idea is try to be a duck. Try to be working hard up here, keeping the business head on, keeping the, the sort of, don't let them, don't let them see the things. Um, but recognise that everyone does. If something leaks out, if sometimes you just feel it's too hard, it's going to happen. Everyone does it. Everyone has it. I've had days like that. 
I've had days where I've had to walk out of the office because I'm too stressed, or I'm too wound up, or I'm too upset by something. It happens, that's life. But recognise that actually that's the way you have to deal with it. Understand everyone's a duck, everyone's paddling like crazy on, underneath, where everyone might look comfortable and happy on the other end. And remember that, that life isn't that nice big blue arrow, life's more like this. It's up, down, all over, round and round. It's like a, it's, it's, like the, it's like trying to solve the mystery of the universe made out of headphone cables and charger cables mixed with silly string in a backpack, put on a snake in a roller coaster that's in space. It's a mess. It is, it's going to be tough. So where, so after all my successes and monumental failures, where did I get with my bag of headphone cables, my stress, my anxiety and my, my struggle? Well, I ended up here. I ended up having qualified with another degree from Durham. I then entered the, the Cywim New Generations competition. I came second, didn't, well, second or third, we didn't really rank the, the two people who didn't win. Um, but I had to go, I enjoyed my presentation and I was happy. And I got a pro published article in Jacobs is where I am now, I'm really happy with, with my position. I'm doing the job I want. I've had countless false starts and failures and now I'm, in my role, I'm trying to help other people recognise that you can have all of these bad days and these things go on, and you can we we want you can you can you can take a step back, you can you can falter, and it's not going to harm you. It, it it might be pain's temporary, glory's forever, and all that. You may you may end up being in a sticky wicket for a few weeks. You may end up feeling down, and in lockdown we're bound to, but you'll get through it and. The success isn't that isn't doesn't predicate um, eternal success and one failure, two failures, three failures, four. It's not the end. There's there's always a, another thing you can do. So be resilient, step up, keep going. Um, you will you will stumble. Pick yourself up just off the start again. Um, failure is not the end. I'd say it's simply the beginning of someone else. And don't be afraid to go and try something. So what would I have liked to know through my failure? What would I have liked to know at, at, at in 2009 where I was, um, when I was, when I, sorry, I've just read the comment from Julie. <laughs> um, what would I have liked to know in 2009 when I didn't get my Falcons contract, didn't get into university and didn't know what I was going to do? Um, I would have liked to have not, not sat and thought about it at that time. I would have liked to have taken a bit of time for myself to think about the, the process, understand myself. One thing that's not on here, which I probably should have put on, is understanding your personality, doing a personality assessment. Um, if I'd have knew what made me tick at that time, I probably would have come to some of the conclusions I, I, I have come to since a lot quicker. Um, don't, 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 don't do the analysis straight away. It's, it's not going to be pretty. You're going to feel like crud. And that, that, that duck voice in the back of your head, um, yeah, tell that, tell that duck to shut the door up. Um, ignore, ignore it, let park it for a bit. Um, and let's say successful people aren't those who never fail. Successful people who just learn to be resilient. And no one's born resilient. No one is resilient. If someone thinks I can't fail and whatever failure happens in my, in my life, I'm going to ignore and dismiss as someone else's problem. Well, you probably end up being the prime minister. Look what happened there. Um, but if you do that, then you, 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 you're lying to yourself. There's no, there's no people like that that don't exist. You have to learn to be resilient and you learn to be resilient by getting a kick in. Life will give you the kick in. Success, failure, all of these things, they're a double-edged sword because as soon as you move up, it's just a bigger play, bigger way to, to virtually fall. Uh, the, the, the highs and the lows, the, the, the bigger the highs, the bigger the lows and things like that. So be prepared. You are going to you are gonna feel like that. But successes are worth it and progressing is worth it. Um, I wish I'd learned these four steps. First process, recover and repair. Let yourself feel what you're going to, yeah, you have to feel. Let yourself go through what you've got to go through before you start learning from it and doing the debrief. Once you're through that phase, then learn, then debrief. Make sure that you understand exactly what's going on. Roll yourself 
grow your wealth of knowledge. Then train, prepare, target, and strategize how you're going to come back. Train your body, train your mind for whatever you're going to have to do. Prepare your tactics. Set yourself goals. Set yourself objectives. I'm going to go and do this. I'm going to go and do that. And doing those two things, that's going to get me to this. And then there's this. And that, and that, and that. Everything's a series of steps. It can look like there's an endless amount of steps in front of you, but it's just signs on a road. That's all the eyes. You're going along. Do I want to go left, go right, or go straight over the roundabout? Make your choice. Make your choice then. Make your choice ahead. Plan your route, but don't be afraid to take a diversion. And then go ahead and do it and succeed, because that's the thing. Once you've learned, once you've got all of that in your back catalogue, the next time you attempt it, you are going to succeed. And I promise you, you will succeed. It might not be in the first thing you thought, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that, but you will succeed. If you keep going, keep picking you, picking yourself up, dusting yourself off and progressing, you will succeed. Um, that critical inner voice is actually is a part of you. It, it doesn't disappear. It doesn't magically walk away from you. But you need to learn how to talk to it. You need to learn how to communicate with it. So as the final exercise, I'll go back to my Wordle and task three. Put a couple of words up to three that you will try to think about next time when you're recovering from a setback or you're trying to grow, or you're trying to move forward. You can say something that's in my presentation or you can say ignoring me talking twat. It's your life, do what you want to do. Opportunity. Brilliant. While the words are coming up, has anyone got any questions as well? You can go on mute and ask the and put them in the chat if you're, you're not wanting to. Um... Okay, thank you very much for um, taking the time, Alex, to provide your insight and, and to provide your experience. It's really, really interesting to hear about what you've, what you've done and what you've achieved. Um, one of the questions we've got is with regards to stress and um, do you have any tips or techniques, any pointers just, you know, to help with stress and, and overcoming setbacks? Um, I think the, 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 the key thing for me and the, the key thing I do with stress and setbacks is, is, is trying to think in that four-step way. You're not, you can't, there's no magic button for stress. There's no magic button for feeling however you're feeling. Um, you will you will feel the progress you will feel hurt you will feel sad you will feel upset you will feel stressed you will feel low value you will feel all of these you need to know what's up in next um and you need to know what's coming in front of you and that those steps and having those four steps for me means that every time something goes wrong i just i can pull out that playbook let yourself feel miserable, let yourself feel unhappy. Then learn from it, then analyze it, then re recontextualize it, understand what happened, what went wrong. Train, prepare for the next stage, and then go forth and have another go. Okay, thank you. And that, that leads on to uh, another question, actually, I think linked to what, to what you were saying. So what advice can you give people to take a step back? Because you mentioned sort of taking a step back when failures occur. So um, is there any sort of, any, any technique that you use in particular or, you know? Yeah, so I, yeah one of the things I've, I've, I've often used is, it's not so much about taking that, that third step back, it's about putting something in the way. So I always have a notebook with me. So when something happens, when something happens in front of me that's a failure, usually as a result of this thing, computer in front of me, pick the notebook up. It doesn't talk back at you. It's not going to give you feedback. It's not going to start calling you. It's not going to start sending emails at you. And just put things in there. Put what happened in, comment about how you're feeling. Whatever works for you. Journaling's a great thing. I don't really 
buy into the lot of the journaling thing. I don't enjoy it. But I find being able to just make some notes on the back of a piece of paper, something that's like this, that I can write it all down. And if I want, I can screw it all up and throw it in the bin. Those emotions can be packaged up in that nice little box on piece of paper and scrapped. Um, I can learn from it as well if I want. It gives you something to, 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 to put in front of you and block the screen. It blocks that, that, that view. You've got something between you and the, and the thing. Um, and, and you can talk to people. That's the other thing that I've done. I'm really fortunate. I've got, I've got a great family and great partner to talk to when I talk to them and say, this is how I'm feeling. This is what's going on. It's just garbage, isn't it? And they go, yeah, it's garbage. And everyone joins in on a bit of a pity party for, for a couple of hours. And then it's like, right, OK, what are you going to do? What's the, what, what, where are you going to go? What, how are you going to move on from where you are? Um, and that's the, the, the four step process start. Brilliant. And uh, Nick Fraser has, has uh, just um, messaged, um, just said, um, think about your daily successes regularly and find a lesson from your daily failures. So thanks, Nick. That's really, really, that's good. It's a good way as well. So thank you very much. Ask people to listen without offering advice. So listening, very important. <laughs> okay. okay, thanks Anita. And uh, yeah, thanks Anita. And a huge thank you to Alex, a really fascinating talk. Um, I was the one who liked the tuna melts. So we'll, we'll differ on that one. Um, I was very impressed with the 17 GCSEs. That's very, very impressive. Um, so for everybody on the call, hopefully you've enjoyed the talk. Uh, please sign up for the future ones if, if you're able. Um, I'd like to say uh, thank you to the organising committee. It's a collaboration between Jacobs Engineering Together, uh, Women's Engineering Society, Sir Robert McAlpine in Newcastle University. Um, but I think today's been a really interesting talk. I know my boys um, are taught growth mindset at school. Uh, so they um, have done a Beautiful Oops um, has been one of the activities they've done where they've done a splodge on a piece of paper and they've made it into something beautiful. Uh, so it's about, you know, creating something positive and, and good out of maybe a mistake. Um, and I tell them that, you know, we all make mistakes every day. Mummy makes mistakes every day and we're all learning every day, even though we might be a lot older than, uh, than our children. So, um, yeah, thank you so much, Alex. That was a really interesting talk. Okay, Thank you so, very much. And just for everyone on the call, we will send a little sheet out for you to have a think about. It's just a one pager for you to think about um, some of the thoughts that you might have and just to write them down for yourselves, really. Um, and this, yeah, this slide talks about that. I don't want to say any more about that, Alex. Uh, no, nothing from me. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we'll we'll close it there. Thanks everyone for joining. Have a good day. Stay right, safe. Thank you very much, everyone.